So roll on a couple of days. The customer emailed me. He'd seen the first part of the video with the repair. And he said, actually, I'd like the meter lamp putting back to a meter lamp. So I've done that. Now, do you remember Mr. Chippy was not happy about the um, audio being transmitted on this? There was a hum with it. Now, you could say that, well, that's up to the... If you're running it as a base station, that's up to the power supply. And to be frank, the bench power supplies we use uh, are not intended necessarily for radio use, the general purpose. So I wouldn't normally bother about that. But I'll tell you what, because we changed four capacitors in it, I decided to change the it's a thousand microfarad capacitor on the on the power input side of it. So we've done that, we've done the capacitor. So what we're going to do is to send Mr. Chippy to the top of the hill just across across from the quarry. So it's going to be 2.2 .2 miles away. And we're going to just radio through to him and just see what he now thinks to the transmitted audio. At the same time, because we had to dig our own demonstrator out, which we sorted on a video about four years ago, we're going to then change that radio over and see what he thinks to the audio on that. Then we'll go over to the base station and listen to them both. Let's put it on a sensible channel. Tango 21, Mr. Chippy there. Roger, are you on 31? Yeah, I'm just picking up some interference from somewhere. Uh, whereabouts are you? Uh, just come up to the top of the hill. Roger, you've not got your mobile phone doing things, have you? No, I'm negative. Ah, oh, well, it was. It's, it's fine now. Right, so I'm on the Murphy. Let me know when you've parked up. Right, okay, so I'm on the Murphy, DS602, the customer set, testing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, how do you read me over? I read you fine, but it's still a horrible buzz. Right, okay, so I'm going to listen to myself while I'm talking on the monitor, sir. Oh yes, there is, you're absolutely right. So now I'm going to go and swap over to our set. Tango 21 on our set over. Yeah, still an awful buzz. Testing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So I'm now going to listen to them both. You see, this may be something we've never noticed before. Um, these sets may inherently not be ideal to use as base stations. So I will now uh, I'll record myself on the two sets on the uh, base station over. Okay, so this is probably doing slightly more power, although it, I think it was about 3.9 watts, so whether or not this is doing 4.1. This is drawing more current, 1.1 um, amps, and the other was 980 milliamps. Yeah, right that. Right, let's just try again. I wasn't on 13.8 volts, I was on 12.8. Absolutely, so I'm now on my set. So let me go back to the customer set. Yeah, Roger. Tango 21 on the customer set, it is drawing 1.1 amp the same. Uh, Roger, that is definitely buzzier. Buzzier, right, okay then. Uh, we'll listen to it on the base station and there we go. But uh, the other thing, of course, we can do as a test is to actually run it on a 12 volt battery. Because at the end of the day, the manufacturer of this radio, if you'd have complained at the time, they said, well, it's not a mobile, it's a mobile set, it's not a home base set, so what do you expect? I know that would be the answer, but uh, we do come up against this from time to time, but not very often. Yeah, Roger that. I don't suppose you've got a battery to hand to just do it while well I'm here. I 
I'm just racking my brain actually. I can't really think that we have. I know where the Hilti one is. That's in the van. Uh, I thought I saw it in the lean to. That's the charger. Well, this video will be going on forever because we're going to record everything because uh, uh, we don't. Uh, there's nothing hidden. This is the whole idea is to educate people and ourselves as well. So um, I'll go over to our base station. So thanks for that. You carry on with your job. Yep, Roger that. Ten ten. Ten ten. Okay, so we're back on the customer set, and we're going to go over to our Harrier base station and let's see how buzzy and horrible this is. Right, so we're back finally with this Murphy, yet another day. Time's ticking on, time is something we haven't got much of because we're supposed to be doing pipe organ restorations. And um, what I've done, I've connected this to a 12 volt battery and we've still got the same hum. I took it to our outdoor um, aerial thing we've got, which is on another building. I have an outside CB in a shed like a sentry box and that's just as bad and it dawned on me it's perfect when it's on the test set on a dummy load and it's perfect when it's on any other dummy load but it's not perfect when it's on our aerial so i've just read the swr on our uh Amtron 99 type thing that we've got here and it's 1.7 which is what we know it is and i've tested the aerial on our um sentry box uh, thing outside and that's 1.7 so they're presenting a similar as to and getting a similar result so we're getting the hum even on a battery so what I'm going to do, what I have just done, is to actually put an antenna matcher, let's put it on top of the set. Um, need to move the camera upwards, which I will do for the next, um, um, the next take. So we've got a SWR176, which has a built-in matcher. And at the moment, I'm going to call Mr. Chippy on the base station and he will talk back to me and say there's still a hum. Tango 21 on the customer set uh, without the matcher over. Yep, Roger. Okay, so now I'm going to take the camera in there so you can hear what it sounds like. Tango 21 testing the Murphy radio running on a 12 volt battery and straight into the antenna with the matcher switched off. Okay, so now we're back here. So I'll switch the antenna matcher on. And when I key up, we've got about 1.3, 1.4 on that meter. So how's that, to Mr. Sierra? Yeah, just give me some more. Two, four, six, eight, your turn to modulate. Uh, yeah, the bus is it's still there, but it's a lot less. And, um, you know, your, your audio obliterates it anyway. You can't hear it when you're talking. OK, right, I'll bring the camera back here. So that's, that's going to be the conclusion of the video. The set's going to go back. It turns out ours is exactly the same. I'm disappointed that um, this these sets do this when presented with an SWR uh, other than perfect. And it's not something I've noticed before, but to be honest, I think I've only ever seen that one I've shown you of ours and one other. So I've got not much to, to go on. Uh, I'll have to see how this is with the York 867, but at the end of the day, they were a cheap radio, even if they weren't expensive. Sorry, I'll say that again. 
they were a cheap radio, even if they weren't that cheap, if you understand what I'm saying. They wanted 69.99 for them, but I think they were maximizing the profit there. So thanks for watching, and we'll just go over and we'll finish the video um, over on that base station. So here's the final take, and it's the Murphy DS602 running on a battery and with the matcher producing an SWR of 1.3 to 1. So there you are, that's the comparison. Um, our set actually slightly buzzier, if that's a good word, when presented to the matcher, but the customer set is slightly buzzier when not presented to the matcher um, uh, when, when it was running off the power supply. So there you are, uh, not a good result, but um, there you are. Thanks for watching.